The Chicago Cubs lose game one to the Kansas City Royals. I guess that's the kid for being an ignoramus, an arrogant, pompous, just a jackass saying the Kansas City Royals suck. They still stink, but they beat the Chicago Cubs 4-3 in game one of this series. Cody Bellinger up to the plate, representing the winning run. You had the Royals right where you wanted them. Bellinger went down 0-2 in the count, and at that point it was, all right, this may be tough. I didn't think strike three should have been strike three, but, you know, whatever. I mean, it was, man, I wanted Bellinger to get the big hit. But these are the games you got to win. I mean, let's just be honest here. When you're in a playoff stretch, you got to beat a team that came in with 39 wins and a million losses. You got to beat those guys. But when you show up to Wrigley, it's always something special. And Kansas City doesn't play the Cubs a lot at Wrigley. And they were the better team in game one. Cole Reagans, at one point, he was the Royals starting pitcher. I don't know if you saw it. He threw one into the crowd. It was one of the worst <laughs> pitches you have ever seen. I don't know if you saw it. It was yeah. just a bit outside. Hit, hit the ball. Head. Hit the ball. Sometimes you just, when you throw it like a hundred, like he does, you just want to scare everyone. You know, like you just, you hit the 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 peanut guy or the beer man, you know, just for, for fun. You hit the ball as they did in Durham Bull, you know, and, and Bull Durham. I mean, like you just, you just smoke the bull just to send the message to everyone. I am a little wild today, so don't get comfortable. All good. Uh, the scouting report from the Cubs was obviously simple. They took pitches. Uh, first batter of the game, Christopher Morrell takes a walk. Nico Horner dumps one in. Cubs had chances from the get-go. They did not capitalize on a lot of those chances until the Royals' defense got a little bit shaky in the uh, the fourth inning when the Cubs scored three runs. Meanwhile, Kansas City, they scored two of their runs unearned off Jamison Tyone. What did you think of Tyone's start? I thought he was okay, but you know what? These are the games, like I said, you know, you can't give up a home run to blow the lead. I mean, you really need to make your best start when you're kind of coming down the stretch run. And we're in the stretch run right now. And this, and this this stretch of the stretch run, 12 games against teams that are not very good, you want to win these games. We've talked about it with our buddy David Kaplan. Cap, he says, hey, you got to win 75% of those games. You know what? You lost one to the White Sox, and you came back. You, you you had an incredible win, probably a game you're not supposed to win, but you won it. I thought that today that the team was going to come out, or yesterday I thought that the team was going to come out and really take care of business, and they didn't. And um, Tyon wasn't terrible, but at the same time, you know, these are games you got to win. Where are the bats, Mick? You see the banner down there. Where are the bats, and where do the Cubs find some more bats? Yeah, I don't know where the bats are. I mean, the – you know, Bellinger's been okay. You know, Morrell had the home run against the Sox on Wednesday, but, you know, uh, uh, Talkman's been a guy that they've relied on. You know, Seiya Suzuki, I, I don't know. But right now, it just seems like the Cubs are having a lot of trouble scoring. And that's an issue for these guys because they need to be hot right now and they look like a team that is a little worn out. Uh, it sounds like they need a spark, maybe. maybe. Oh, they've had, they've yes. had, they've had Mick. They've had plenty of days off. So you say they, they, <laughs> they need something. Do they need some rest? Do they need? A, where do they get that spark? They've gotten their rest at this point. It's go time. They have, I think, uh, a few more, a, a few more mystery things down in, in the minor leagues that they can potentially pull out. And one of those is Pete Crow Armstrong. Although you don't think he's a he's a mystery entity whatsoever. You think as soon as Armstrong comes up. He is a jolt. It's time because you don't have any more time. You can't blow games. You, you got to beat these teams. And if you're going to bring them up in September, why not make it happen right now? It's just time. This is a guy that's going to come in and immediately make a difference. He's going to be a jump start for the team. He can run the bases. He's, he's just a guy who wants to win every single play, every single pitch. He brings energy. The other team's not going to like him. And I bet you that some of the players on the Cubs aren't going to like him at first either. And then when he wins some games for him, whether it's a walk-off home run or he scores from first base on a single or he has a 16-pitch at bat and hits a grand slam or he's at second base with the bases loaded and scores on a ground out or whatever he does – they need that. They just look like a team right now that is a little bit fatigued. And I think that Pete Crow Armstrong is just the guy to come up. And we're, I saw where Patrick Mooney in the Athletic wrote that 
hey, Pete Crow Armstrong, Jordan Wicks could be guys that get caught up in September. The problem is we're in a real tight dog race right now, not only to win the the central, but also to get into the wild card. You know, so if you want to do that, you've got to score runs. Th- these are the games where a stolen base here matters, where a base hit here matters, where if a guy is just able to do something spectacular, it sparks your team, it matters. And and to me, the Cubs over the last three games just look like a team that's tired. And I think Pete Crow Armstrong is just the jolt of electricity that they need. But the problem is, is what, what move are you going to make to bring them on the roster? Hey, look, I, that ain't my job. I'm just sitting here talking baseball with you. You want to win, you need to bring up Hollywood Pete. Bring up Hollywood Pete. You heard it from the man. Um, I've heard some Cubs fans say, well, where do you play him? You, you got, say, a Suzuki and Mike Talkman already platooning and, and fighting for a job there. You have Bellinger in the outfield. You have Ian Happ as an everyday player. Where do you plug him? And, and here's my logic. Mike Talkman, you've seen the stats. You've watched with your own eyes what he's done this season and how much he has meant to the Chicago Cubs. But you wonder. Do you take your number one prospect or do you take a a player every day that hasn't been an everyday player throughout his career and he's now 32 years of age? I don't know the answer to that. Now, now Mike Talkman was amazing for the San Francisco Giants through about 30, 40 games. He fell off. He ended up the season in the minor leagues. Now, am I saying he's going to do that with the Cubs? I don't know. But David Ross didn't even play him in yesterday's game. Yeah, and I mean, look, Pete Crow Armstrong is a guy who is going to bring a lot to the table. Gold glove defense, base running. You're bringing him up anyway. I mean, look, they're, uh, that's when I see the story in The Athletic, that tells me that they're bringing him up. They promoted him to AAA. They traded Nelson Velasquez, who ha- is going to really make the Cubs look foolish for trading him. He's got four home runs in his first like week in the big leagues uh, as a Royal I'm just hoping that he doesn't beat the Cubs today or tomorrow. Just get him out of town because eventually we're going to look back on that trade and be like, what were we doing there? But you know what? That's the market that the Cubs are in. I'm not blaming management. I'm just telling you he's a really good player. And when he got traded, that's when Hollywood Pete got promoted. We're running out of games to win. We're running out of opportunities. And this team, the White Sox games and the Royals game on Friday, they just – don't look like they have a lot of energy. And this guy would be a jolt of energy the minute you put him in there. Mike Talkman leading off. What was the stat that Cap gave us? The Cubs are 25 and 12 when Talkman leads off. If you're not going to bring up Pete Crow Armstrong, who you say is a prototypical leadoff hitter from day one. He can be. And and he wasn't, but he can be, right? I mean, like he he was, I don't think he really bat at leadoff a lot until this year but then when he got in that spot he was just like he was so damaging because he can steal bases he can get on base he's got power he's driving in runs like he's doing all these things he can do he can do that if you want him to you like talkman in that leadoff spot moving forward though and find another role for pete crow armstrong somewhere whether it's off the bench or another position like where, where do you play him is the big the big question and who gets sent down is the bigger question yeah and i don't know the answer to that but you know the Cubs need something right now because scoring runs is is hard for them. And, and if the Royals don't throw the ball around the field, they probably didn't, you know, wouldn't even have had the lead Friday. So the bottom line is this: is you 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 got you know thirty some games left, and you need to have a team that is hitting on all cylinders like they were during the eight game winning streak. They're playing some of the worst teams in baseball, and they're losing. So they've lost two out of three to two really bad teams. They've got to win today. They got to win tomorrow. And they need some momentum. And like you mentioned before, when you said, "Hey, when the Reds promoted Ellie De La Cruz, they got that spark." It's not going to be the same because Pete Crow Armstrong isn't a big power hitter like Ellie uh, Ellie De La Cruz. But it will be the same as that. This guy's going to do some stuff that's going to make everyone else better because they're going to be like, "Hey, if I don't get off my ass, this guy's taking my playing time." Snap back to reality. Let's get to the present. Today's game, 120 against the Royals at Wrigley Field. It's not Brandy Singer. Mick just has a little brandy on his mind, if you know what I mean. It's Brady <laughs> Singer, 8-8, eight eight, 491 ERA against Justin Steele, the staff ace, 13-3, and 
two seven nine ERA as Mick goes in there. The, the post production to get Brady up there is quick. Look at ah! that. Look at those fingers, Mick. Wow, quick fingers. Always, I've always got alcohol on my mind. Whether it's bourbon, whether it's gin, whether it's brandy. Now, I don't brandy, think I, come on, come on. I don't think I've had brandy and since I was hopping into my good parents' stuff. liquor cabinet, good yeah, stuff. Just to go to Riverton <laughs> Music Center at age six. It's years. in the back of the shelf, is what you're saying. Yeah, let's just say the apple brandy brandy's is no great. Fun. I'm just yeah. look for those of you that are over 21. Apple brandy is a really great product. Here's the wonderful thing. This is a great segue <laughs> as we pull up the demographics of this show. Just about everyone listening is over 21. Now, this is we, we've talked about how this is our own sports bar. It's a sports bar in the in the Wrigley bleachers. And look, the undercovers that we have, we, we don't have undercovers. No undercovers at our sports bar. In fact, the guy carting at the front door, as long as you have something that isn't a joke, you're welcome in. But apparently the youngsters aren't coming to the party because you see that uh, our demographics, we have 30-year-olds, 40-year-olds, 50-year-olds, 65 and up. We got a little bit of everything, and we love it, folks. We absolutely love you joining us. Yeah. So uh, singer against Justin Steele today. Look at those numbers from Justin Steele. Good God. Yeah, I hope he steps on the uh, Royals today and just continues his push for the Cy Young. And I, I've said it before, and, and look, Chuck, you're a guy that likes to play the odds a little bit. Putting some money on him to win the Cy Young would not be a bad investment because he's been as good as it gets, and he is the Cubs' ace. And if the Cubs are going to make the playoffs, they're going to need his best every five days. Uh, I'll tell you this. First off, He's got Burt Blylevin type stuff when he throws the big hook on people and then is able to locate his fastball. Then the other thing is just knowing him personally. He's a great guy. He's someone that you want to cheer for. He's just a, a regular guy that plays baseball, loves the game, really educated guy in that. And um, I love the fact that he's starting because I think the Cubs really need a win. Uh, if you love the Cubs, like and subscribe to the Cubs baseball channel. I've added some decor as we uh, hit up the U-Box that made its way across the country. The Let's Sammy go. Sosa jersey in-house. I, I have a question for you because Ask I think a lot of people want to know your take on it. And if they didn't want to know your take, they do now that I'm bringing it up. Sammy Sosa, are you in or are you out? Yes, yeah, this is a difficult question. And I'm going to tell you just as someone who has been with the Cubs organization for a really long time. All right, first off, I've heard that when Sammy was with the Cubs towards the end of his tenure, he wasn't always the easiest guy to deal with. He wasn't someone that was really friendly to the people that worked in the organization. And then the way that he exited the Cubs and then the way that he exited baseball, I mean, look, we all know about that. With that said, I, I just feel like we're a, you know, a sport and a business and a country of forgiveness and I miss Sammy. I miss seeing Sammy. Look, I remember the article, you know, where he compared himself to Jesus Christ, you know, I don't know, less than five years ago. But I'd love to see him back, man. If it was a Cubs convention, if it was on a marquee broadcast, if he comes on the Cubs baseball channel, we had a lot of good times watching Sammy Sosa blast balls onto the streets around Wrigley. And I, I think it's time. I really do. Look, as a kid growing up in Cincy that uh, would get off school at 2.30 every day and run home to watch the WGN broadcast and just watch Sammy launching them into the street and, and growing up. like I was in first grade during the, the home run race with Mark McGuire. That's when your brain's kind of being developed and turning into a sports fan. You know, I don't remember anything before first grade. My first memories of sports in general were, were Sammy Sosa, you know, the, the hop after a home run, just always had the big old chaw in or whether it was whatever, you know. <laughs> but Sosa was just the man. The reason I fell in love with baseball, and regardless of what he's done over the years, I'll always have a soft spot, soft spot in my heart for slugging Sammy. Slamming yeah. Sammy, rather. It's slamming been so long we said it's slamming Sammy. Well, you can say slugging Sammy, too. But the, at the end of the day, Sammy Sosa, uh, you know, definitely linked to the steroids era. But I think we're so far past that right now. This isn't me saying, hey, I, I want Sammy in the Hall of Fame or anything like that. I'd love to see Sammy back in the mix again, though, where we hear from him, we see his face and – you know, he's just such a big part of Cubs lore. And like you, I, I remember watching Sammy. I, I, I'll never forget him running out with the American flags. Oh, yeah. 9-11. Uh, 
You know, I, I love that about him, the the energy that he brought to Wrigley Field. And no one's perfect. You know, no one's perfect. It, it, we don't have to exile him for the rest of his life. I mean, I think there's a lot of us that would love to dust off our Sammy Sosa jerseys like you, bring out our Sammy Sosa bobblehead dolls, and and relive one of the all-time great Cubs. Oh, I'll rock this to Wrigley proudly. I do not care whatsoever. And, and in terms of the uh, – in terms of You're Cooper wearing Stout, that. Well, hold on. You're wearing that. When you and I are in the bleachers drinking down beer bats and causing uh, yeah. cup snakes, you're wearing that. I'll have a Chief Keef shirt underneath that says they <laughs> are Sosa, and then I'll have I'll have this over. But in terms of the Hall of Fame and Cooper, I know Stanley, what I'm wearing. I got to figure out what jersey I'm wearing now. Rhino, so, I'm so, wearing so, a Rhino. So, Rhino. So, so Wire Bonds, they should all Rhino. be in the Hall of Fame. I've told you this, Rhino. Yes, I'm not getting into this. That this is a whole. You're taking this somewhere different. I'm, I'm not just going. Saying, Mick, I'm just saying asterisk nope. alley. The Hall of Fame. There's an alleyway. You open the door. You go <laughs> down today. the asterisk alley. You take your kids there. It's like a museum. You say, "Hey, kids, these guys aren't in this wing of the Hall of Fame because right. they're massive cheaters, but right. they're big parts of the game." That's Let all me say, say this as we close this video. You guys that are watching, if you made it all the way here from the beginning to the end. Give me your comments. I want to know what you think. He's a yes with an actress. I'm a no, but I still love Sammy and want to see him back. See you, Mick.